to use for the, uh, the St. Helens merger and indeed over the analysis. If we were to move to Greensby, we would achieve an average response time of 6 minutes and 18 seconds across what would be the combined area. Got some maps which will hopefully show that a little bit better than just sort of the raw data as it is. And to be clear, that's been achieved by mapping the incident to the most recent incident data. It's 2013-14, it's taken the life risk incidents on both of the areas and it maps them from the, the new location using the uh, using the mapping software that we have. It's called Map Info, and we have a we have a root finder, not the similar to AA root finder, which uh, which calculates response times based on the actual response times that we that we achieve. The current average response time on the West Kirby uh, West Kirby's area is five minutes twenty four. That just happens to be that's the Merseyside average. It's just coincidence. Upton's average response is 4 minutes 34, both of which are quicker than our 10 minute response standard. To be clear, when we set the 10 minute response standard, that, that had nothing to do with us aiming to take 10 minutes to get anywhere. That is all to do with, that is a maximum response of 10 minutes on 90% of occasions. That is all to do with the reasonably foreseeable reduction in fire appliances due to simultaneous incidents that our mobilising officer in the control room then has to try to manage to achieve the best cover across Merseyside. There's 10 key locations at which if we put a fire engine in each one of the stations, we can get to 90% of Merseyside in 10 minutes. The national average response time for dwelling fires only, bearing in mind our figures include all life risk incidents, so a stern a test if you like, is 7 minutes 24 seconds. The average response time would be closed West Kirby Station outright again it's based on last year's data so that could if this year the incidents fell in different places then clearly the, that those figures would change obviously would be 8 minutes and 43 seconds the, the map here is and again it's, it, there are keys on the on, on maps that I, I've got in the uh, that are further on in the presentation what that's showing is, is the response coverage from just having four fire stations on the well. What you, I don't know whether you can see that when you've got in, as you look, in the southwest corner, you've got Hesville, southeast is Bromba, northwest, uh, sorry, northeast rather is Peckenhead, northwest is the existing Upton station. We move on to the next slide. That shows the Greensby station, and what you can see is the grey and the there's just there's there's less red and yellow. So it, what it means is the coverage to West Kirby is is quicker, obviously from uh, from Greensby than it is from Upton. And what I'll do is uh, is hopefully uh, we've got a couple. There's two more slides, which you just uh, so that's that's the first slide, but just a, a close up version, and then move on to see the second slide. Just gives you the self-evident we're going to be quicker to get to West Kirby if we move to uh, we move a mile, 1.2 miles up the road. Probably to make it a bit easier if we use the, an example which you can all go home and do this yourselves. If you go on to AA Route Finder, you put in the, coast, uh, the postcode for Upton Fire Station and you put in the postcode for Greasby Library, via AA Route Finder, it will give you 1.2 miles in three minutes which is an average speed of 24 mile an hour. Our map info, so our, our mobilising software, applies 20% uplift to the average speed to account for exemptions under the Road Traffic Act. Now at the last meeting here, there was uh, one particular individual who was giving me a hard time over saying the, uh, the average speed, you should broadly, would be about 30 mile an hour for a fire engine, to which you said, well, what about the blue lights? And that is with blue lights. And the point of what I didn't get the opportunity to respond is, is to say that an average speed means that for part of that journey, we could be doing 10 mile an hour, but for part of that journey, we could be doing 50 mile an hour. Now, be under no illusions, there is no prospect that we travel in fire appliances through 30 mile an hour or 40 mile an hour speed limit areas exceeding anything like 50 mile an hour. We don't. 
we do not do that. Our policy is we do not exceed the speed limit by more than 20 mile an hour, and rightly so. We drive to arrive. We, we cannot drive through red lights. We stop at red lights, we treat them as a giveaway. Fire engines do not have particularly fast acceleration. It takes them a while to get going again. So our average speed, use a route finder, it would give you 28.8 mile an hour, which reduces the journey time to two minutes, 30 seconds, which is broadly consistent with our map info prediction, which is, uh, is just slightly less than that. I'll show that on the, uh, the next couple of slides, which uh, we'll come to in one second. Our appliances spend over 50% of their time on stations. Therefore, in these circumstances, it's reasonable for me to assume a two minute 30 or thereabouts increase in response times to West Kirby if we didn't move to Breezeby. That is the reality. The point I need to make is Breezeby is still on the Upton station area. So the converse back into Upton is less acute. But whatever we do, it is going to increase response times. Made that clear from the outset, there's nothing we can do that is going to improve response. Even if we close West Kirby and stay at Upton, because the fire engine station area would be much bigger, the likelihood is at some point it will be on the old West Kirby area and an incident will occur in Upton and we'll have to respond back. The point I should make is as well the for the for absolute clarity. The mapping that we've done is based on incidents where the response was from station. So it's mapping the station responses and to make that clear because I understand it's when I've, when I've responded to questions in the past and we've had three, this is the fourth of these weekends, I understand it is confu pardon me, confusing for people to, uh, to reconcile the, uh, the averages. And bear in mind as well, these are mean averages. So there are extremes, we are quicker and we are slower, it's, it's, the, it's not the mode, so it's not the most frequently occurring, and it's not the median, it isn't the, the middle data set, it's the mean average. Add them all up, divide them by the number of incidents. In terms of the next couple of slides, these, these effectively are the, this is map info, so that's plotting the route from Upton, via Greensby to West Kirby Fire Station. Very simple, just station to station. Eight minutes, 28, sorry, eight minutes, 28 seconds. So next slide, Vic. That's from Greensby to the same location, six minutes, five seconds. Next slide, Vic. So there's the difference, two minutes, 23. So it, by and large, it's the same as AA Route Finder. So they say, you can go home and just run that yourselves, do the maths. It's that simple. It's nothing more complicated than that. And I've put those extra slides in simply just to make the point rather than to, because I can slice data up any way we like. That is what it's down to. And what you will have heard me say, I think it was at this meeting, was that our integrated risk management planning, in many respects, has more to do with AA Root Finder than it does anything else. It is that simple. Hey, Vic. So just by way of summary then, after a decade of budget reductions, the authority can no longer employ sufficient number of firefighters to keep all of our stations open. Station mergers, accepting, put aside the issues of location now around appropriateness or otherwise, station mergers do result in the least impact of outcome that we can achieve from an operational response perspective, which is what I, I'm required to consider and also what the authority is required to get the fire and rescue authority is required to consider. DCLG have awarded the authority the full amount of capital bid to fund our three major proposals. The existing library site is owned by Wirral and they are supported, the Wirral officers, clearly given the level of interest there would need to be a cabinet decision, but it was only in keeping with government policy just to make that point, not say it's right and it's wrong. That is the, the, the reality around the, the integrated community facility. As I've explained previously, the existing library site is preferable and it's the only site that we get planning from. That is the reality. That is the extent core strategy for Wirral in relation to planning. We would need to demonstrate special circumstances to achieve planning permission for 
any other site and we have looked at a number of sites but the ones that we would would be viable would be better than truth if say pump lane would be better given the uh, given the uh, the melons and, and oil lake coverage but as it stands that's green belt and we cannot demonstrate the exceptional circumstances we would have to go all the way down an application in relation to the library site to be refused permission and the advice from officers in Wirral is if the authority appealed which my guess is they would have to to then be able to demonstrate the uh, exceptional circumstances they win the appeal again because of the core planning strategy as it stands and just finally to make the point that the consultation is concerned with operational response not planning issues i understand that it is very difficult to disengage the two i understand the depth of feeling in relation to the the the, the issue particularly in greasby absolutely understand that but that said the fire and rescue authority are not the authority that is required to consider that that is Wirral council and that is the planning committee the majority of people that i have spoken to from Greasby, and there is a number now and lots of community representatives as well are saying that they recognize the logic behind the merger it is the site they are opposed to and, and, and i absolutely absolutely understand that and completely completely recognize that position what that says to me is the majority of people recognize the operational logic which is that which I'm held to account for. Be assured that whilst I will absolutely have to recommend this option to the authority for those reasons, that I would also work with anyone to secure another location, as I'm sure with my colleagues in Wirral. That is not to say, however, that we may not still have to go through what could be a potentially torturous process before we could get to that point and i'm afraid that as it stands appears to be the reality what i would say is i don't profess to be an expert of anything least of all planning so far greater and more informed minds than mine would need to take a view on that but what i do know a little bit about is operational response which brings me back to my recommendation I'll pause at that point to take whatever questions but before we do I am aware that there are a number of people who were not able to to get in the last time who have managed to get in now but may well be out in other rooms and what I would ask is is that those people are given an opportunity to ask questions ahead of people who may have asked questions previously thank you uh, thank you Ken. Um, I, I've already received a number of questions from the other room, so I'm going to take a couple of those first before I open it up to the room here. On, on, on the basis of fairness, really. Uh, and one, Dan, was wh why hasn't uh, Heswell Fire Station been included as part of the fire cover equation? Uh, couldn't Heswell become part of the process of delivering cover to West Kirby? Well, Heswell already does provide the second response to parts of West Kirby. And I will take it first, listen, because we, the mobilising system selects the nearest fire appliance irrespective of the station area. Station area is by and large for the purposes of admin. The issue that we have with Heswell, and Heswell's crewing system is not whole time, it is it, ostensibly it's, it's day crewing if you like but it's the same people there of a, of a night who were there of a day albeit on the team so it, it already operates a i suppose the most efficient albeit very difficult to sustain their crewing system the issue for heswell is it, is it covers neston neston is in cheshire but under section 16 of the fire and rescue services act which is concerned with mutual assistance it is covered by Merseyside under a reciprocal arrangement that we have with Cheshire Fire and Rescue Service. Their nearest fire station is Ellesmere Port, which is some distance away from Neston. So we make the attendance to 
the Neston and Parkgate area. We extend them through as far down as Williston and Burton. In return, Cheshire make the first response to Cronton over in Nosley, which is in Merseyside, but Widnes is as near and truth is, is, uh, is equally as near to that as Western is. It's not quite the same as the distances between uh, Ellesmere Port and Neston. And Cheshire also are through there, some of the changes they are making are building a new fire station in Penketh which will cover large areas of South St Helens and Ambold Heath. So that area is also seeded across to uh, Cheshire. So that mutual arrangement is not something we have a legal agreement with Cheshire and that is not something that we can withdraw from. Uh, just another couple of questions from outside the room. Um, have you considered uh, a corner on the Upton Bypass at Sobel Massey uh, as an alternative site? And secondly, you you haven't published yet the value of the, la the land at West Kirby and Upton, and what is that value? And the, um, the first, in response to the first question, the uh, we have considered the land, and the, which is which is one of the pieces of land in Wibble's ownership. The uh, from an operational response perspective, that does not give the same, uh, the, the delay in response would be longer than from the degrees we signed. Okay, as I've, as I've said, the, uh, as I've said, and I will, uh, I will share all of the, uh, the map information with you at the close of the meeting, but, right, I can't hear him. Do you want to come down here? Do you want, no, no, no. You'll have to come down here, otherwise the people in the other room can't hear you. I've just handed over to the organiser of what you're calling a consultation, which seems to me more like a dialogue. Yeah. Um, the main issue... <laughs> May, may I just um, the main issue, as far as I'm concerned, is um, there is coming up next year legislation called community planning, which allows people of localities to plan their own areas and say what they want and what they don't want in their villages or their local centres. That is coming in 2015. Now, if I may say, you've just missed sites, which would be more advantageous to the fire service in the green belt and there is dispensation to allow development for appropriate purposes in the green belt with heavy uh, landscaping such as wood planting now if the point that i'm making is if the people make it absolutely abundantly clear that they don't want the village center of greenby to become dominated by a fire station and in other words there is no site available, then that opens the doors to look at a whole series of other sites. Have I not made that very point during the presentation? Did I not? Like, did I not say, like, did I not make that point? What I said is, what I said is, use the punt lane as, as an example that would be in my view a better site than the site currently that we have offered and what i also said is that in order to achieve the required exceptional circumstances from planning we would not there would not we could not have a viable alternative and i am advised I have said all of this during the presentation. What I've been advised is that as long as that alternative exists, we are not then able to demonstrate the special circumstances. You and I, you and I are saying the same thing. No, yeah, can I just come back on that? What you're saying, I completely understand. You're saying that you can get permission to get exceptional circumstances for a, a, a well-designed development that happens to be in the green belt 
because you're saying there is an alternative site in Greasby Village. Now I'm saying, if the community of Greasby do not want to see their village dominated by a fire station, then that site is no longer available, which opens the door to us to look at other sites outside yeah, yeah. of Greasby. Which is exactly the point that I've made. And what I've said to you is, and I think I used the term that I said, but it would have been something along the lines of, there is, there is a degree of bureaucracy still to the fire and rescue authority, me in the first instance, and then the authority to go through, before we could get to that point. Because as it stands, rightly or wrongly, and again, I, I don't disagree with what you're saying, the fact of the matter is, the advice from Wirral officers within the planning department is that, that that site is appropriate for a fire step. That is not my view, that is their view. Okay, well, we are having a consultation, and if the people of Greensby do not want to see this, and we get that message across to our councillors and to officers, then we're on your side. You've convinced us of your need to be in a central location. You've taken a long time to convince us with a lot of facts uh, and figures. But the point is that we're on your side. We'll get find a side for you. We are saying the same thing then. Well, as it fine. stands, and I need to make this point absolutely clear, and I'm not in any way, I'm not being in any way critical of our colleagues from Will, the planning officers, because in the same way as I need to make operational recommendations based on my primary legislation, they are bound by the extant will planning strategy and it is that the, the site in Greenby for a fire station doesn't include isn't included in any strategy whatsoever of the planners or anybody else this is completely come out of the blue i think it's a done deal but if we can help you to say the site in Greenby is not available then we're all going to work with you to find a site which is acceptable to all of us can I make a comment in response to that? I'd like to thank the gentleman for making that comment. <laughs> to be clear, I would, uh, I, I would welcome the opportunity. I'm not sure I can make this any more clear and true. I would welcome the opportunity to be able to consider sites other than the library in particular and make the point again. I'm not sure I can make this any more clear. Pump Lane in particular towards the junction, the roundabout, the, with the uh, West Kirby Road at uh, just to uh, just to the west of Sorghum Massey would be an even more optimal location than the library, but it is in the Greenbelt. So if the people of Greensby do not want a fire station in Greensby Village, then that must be removed as an option. Unfortunately, that is not within my gift to do that, nor is it in the gift of the Fire and Rescue Authority. Can I come back on the, uh, the second point that was uh, those people who've requested the, uh, the value of the land in Upton and West Kirby, the value of those sites, that information has been exempted under the, uh, the, under the local government act. The reason it is exempted, the reason it is exempted is because that would then show the Fire and Rescue Authority's hand at the point it came to uh, try and sell the land. Because clearly the Fire and Rescue Authority is duty bound to achieve the best price it can for that land. That is the reality of the, of the advice that we were given by the clerk to the authority. Right, take that off with the clerk of our authority then, because in truth it's not my decision. Okay, I got, I got, no, no, please don't stand there. The, the people in the other room can hear you. I come from the other room. But you may have come from the other room, but you can't speak from there. They can't hear you in there, so there's no point. Going back to a point that was only a few moments ago, how much did the fire authority go to?